Buongiorno beautiful people, how are you? I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to my channel. Once again, I'm currently making myself my second coffee because I really need caffeine today. But yes, how are you? I hope you're doing well. So it has been a week since I started getting back on track and I wanted to do sort of an update and show you exactly where I'm at and what I'm doing next. So yeah, I wet myself this morning and I was pleasantly surprised. Not because, not only because I did lose a little bit of weight and I, even when I measure myself, I am a little bit smaller. But most importantly, because when I weighed myself, I saw that I did gain 0.3% of muscle mass, which I know is not much, but because I haven't been really working out as hard lately and I'm not at the gym and I still sort of try to intuitive eating, but in a bit of a calorie deficit, it does to show that I'm on the right path. So I was 67.2 kilos, which is exactly a kilo and a half less than Friday of last week. Um, and I did lose 0.7% of fat mass, which is also great which means that as i said i am the right path and i make sure to wait myself at exactly the same time in the morning um last time for some reason i decided to wait myself after having my coffee and my biscuit in the morning so i did exactly the same thing today and as well i know it's a little bit tmi but i am still on my period i know it's weird it's been over a week now but as well that is the same so you know i try to make sure uh, that everything was pretty much in the same condition so that it would be comparable um and yeah i'm really really excited as well i did a little comparison video i don't think i look different and i will be really really like it would be so weird if I did look different after just a week um, but I do feel better I do feel a little bit more leaner and lighter and less bloated and just healthier overall um, and yeah I did measure myself and I did lose a few or even half a centimeter which is again it's not much but it has been just a week so I think is everything is okay and everything is, um, you know, going in the right track and going in the right direction, which is great and I'm really, really happy for it. Um, but yeah, so as I said, I up to this moment when I started this guest back in track series and if you've seen the first episode, you will know that for the first week, I did not set myself a calorie goal. I did not calculate my macros. I did not track what I was eating. I was just ensuring that I would follow three principles, which is have enough water, prioritize protein, and make sure that I have loads of veggies with every meal. So with these three principles, basically that's what I've been doing and that's how I've been eating. And it, as you've seen, I have lost weight. So it does to show that if you follow your body and you intuitive eating in a way that it is not only healthier but you still feel full and you just ease your way into it, you still can get some results. Um, so that's what I did and that's why I was really happy and um, I, felt, I felt good, I felt positive. But now it has been a week and now I decided to start calculating my macros, uh, setting them, calculate them and as well I said I want to set myself a rigid structure schedule and workout split so that I know exactly what I'm going to do for the next two weeks until I revise it again um, and track everything again to see if it was working but yeah I just want to set the bases and know exactly what I'm going to do starting tomorrow well yeah starting tomorrow so I thought to do it with you as well as you can tell I also wore the exact same clothes to wait myself to make sure that everything would be the same um, so I was scrolling through my old videos where i did calculate all my macros on camera and i showed you step by step how to do it what website to use what everything and to be fair if i may say so that myself i did such a good job that i don't think it makes sense for me to redo the whole thing again i find it so clear and i've literally followed my video to calculate my macros so i think what i'm going to do is link my video in the description box below uh, where i calculate my macros um i'll try to 
also link it with the time stamp or uh, starting from the moment where I start calculating my macros so you don't have to watch it through all the thing. But yeah, I did such a good job at doing that that I literally am following my own video. So basically just to wrap it up and make it super quick, the first thing that you have to do if you want to calculate macros, at least how I do it, is weighting myself and calculating my lean mass. So if you saw when I weighted myself this morning, you can see my kilos and you can see my percentage of fat so if you take that percentage away that's your lean mass and if you convert that into pounds then you can calculate your macros following the formulas that I use so if I weighed 67.2 kilos this morning which is around 148 pounds and I take off my fat mass which is 23.3 percent so yeah I take that away that leaves me with 113 pounds of lean mass which is incidentally exactly the same weight i was at when i made the video that i just said calculating my macros so i basically follow that i did change a few things but basically it's the same thing that's why i don't want to repeat myself because it's going to be exactly the same content i know that now that i have 113 pounds of lean mass and then using the website which again is linked in the video um there's a website where you can calculate your bmr which is basal metabolic rate which tells you basically if you stand still and you just exist exist or you just you know do your normal life how many calories you need to maintain your weight and be exactly the same person and then if you have that then you can calculate uh, depending on your goal what calorie intake you should have so if you want to put on weight or you know go on a calorie surplus to gain muscle more easily you can add calories to that BMR and then if you want to get leaner and lose weight you take off a few calories from that BMR um, obviously not too many so if my average BMR is 1800 calories and I want to take off it's recommended around 20% off or 20% adding, um, that leaves me with 1,450 calories, which is quite low to be honest. And I don't know how comfortable I feel having it that low. I know that when I was doing it in the video, I did it and I still felt fine. I still was eating fine and I was still feeling with energy and all that. Uh, but I don't know if this time around I want to do it. So I think I'm going to do it for a week. And then if I feel like it's not working for me, I will reconsider. So yeah, 1,450 calories is going to be my target for at least one week. And then in terms of macros, as I said, I will explain exactly in the video that I mentioned, I explain exactly why the parameters and who says what and all the reasoning behind it. But in terms of protein, um, instead of going to the high range of grams per lean mass, I decided to go slightly less. So instead of 1.4 grams of protein per lean mass in pounds, I decided to take 1.2 which gives me with 135 grams of protein, which I think is still high enough. And it's, if I'm not wrong, exactly or very close to the amount of protein I ate when I did a what I ate in a day video with intuitive eating. It was basically that much, I believe. Yes, that day of intuitive eating, I had 135 grams of protein. So very, very close to what I want to eat. So I know that I'm capable of it and I'm comfortable having it because I intuitively ate that much anyway. So that's great. Then in terms of fats, I think what I like to go for is 25% of my calorie goal. So yeah, 20% of 1,450 calories, that gives me with 290 calories which divided by nine is 32 grams of fat, which I did go over on the day of intuitive eating, which might be an indicator that I like having slightly more fats on the scale of things. Um, so I will try to go down to 32 grams of fat instead and see how it feels and see how my body responds to that. And then finally, carbs are always the reminder. So once you calculate your protein and once you calculate your fats, the reminder of the calories are the, for carbs and if you divide that by four that gives me 154 grams of carbs which are slightly under what I ate that day of intuitiving but as I said because that day I ended up eating around 1700 calories and now my target is 1450 obviously 
I will have to eat slightly less than that day. Uh, but that day, if you saw the video, you saw that I had nachos, I had biscuits, I had chocolate, I had so many things that A, are not necessary during the day um, because it wouldn't make me starve if I don't have them. Uh, so it's completely doable and I know it could be completely fine. So yeah, I feel like I'm completely comfortable with this. Again, I went through it really, really quickly, but in that video, I go back to it for me to calculate my own macros. So I think I did a good job on explaining everything. Of course, if you have any more questions, just leave them in the comment section down below and I will make sure to help you calculate your macros if you need my help, it's not a problem at all. Just bear in mind that this is just me doing it and that doesn't mean that is the only way of doing it or that I am doing it right 100%. So yeah, just bear in mind that it's just my opinion what I used to calculate it. So yeah, you know, just be mindful of that. And besides that, in terms of activity level, workout splits, and everything that has to do with burning those calories, I think the most important thing for me, besides working out, but something that I haven't done lately, even though I told myself that I would, but I have not, is going out for walks. I have gone in little walks, but I have not been anywhere near the 10,000 or 12,000 steps target that I used to do. So that is something that I have no more excuses for and I need to start doing it. And I need to be very, very strict with it because it's important, especially now that we are in lockdown again and we have to work from home. Well, at least I can work from home. Um, I'm spending too much day sat down, my back hurts and it's just overall not healthy to be enclosed at home every day, all day long. So that is something that I have no more excuses for and I'm gonna go out for walks. So as I mentioned, I want to do, for now, 10,000 steps a day. I think it's still, you know, a big target to hit, but it's still quite doable, it's not crazy. However, because I do work full-time, nine to five, I think it's impossible for me to expect to go out for one huge walk and hit 10,000 steps on that one outing. So I think I'm going to be realistic and we'll go in a big walk before starting work. So as soon as I wake up, I have my coffee and biscuit, I usually know, and then I will go for a huge walk there, which usually if I do my normal round and around this town, it goes up to around 4,000, 5,000 steps which is great because then obviously at home, I do walk a little bit doing things and going around the house. And then mid afternoon, before it gets dark, I can go for my second walk, uh, which usually depending on how many meetings and all that, I can do that because, you know, instead of taking 4,000 coffee breaks during the day, I can just go for one big walk in the afternoon and then finish work straight after that. So I think that's going to be completely fine and doable. Um, but again, this is because of my work and my office hours and everything. So obviously it's not, it's going to depend how you are. And of course it's going to be different on weekends. So yeah, on weekends there's going to be even less of an excuse for me not to go on a big walk. So yeah, I'm going to do 10,000 steps a day. Then in terms of workouts, I am comfortable doing five workouts per week. But I think the I'm going to do it a slightly different than I did last time and I'm going to focus on two upper body days, two lower body days and then one full body slash heat session per week. So I'm going to evenly split upper body and lower body days just because my goal, overall goal is to get stronger overall so I don't want to necessarily target more my glutes or my lower body and give less attention to my upper body I want to be equal I want to get better in everything and anything so yeah I'm going to do two upper body and two lower body alternating so that I don't have to you know hit the same muscle twice in a row which you know is slightly counterproductive because my muscle don't have time to rest and recover so yeah i think what i'm going to do is lower upper lower upper and then a heat or a full body session anything to get my heart rate up and start working on my cardiovascular capacity which is going down and then in terms of structuring each workout i think the best thing i can do is supersets just because 
A, it makes the time be used a little bit more efficiently because if you do two exercises back to back in a superset and then you repeat that for, I think I'm going to do five times or six times, five times, then it means that you can do more exercises in a less amount of time instead of doing, you know, one exercise repeated for X amount of sets, then pass to the next, then pass to the next. If you just do two in a row, rest, two in a row rest like that then it's much quicker and it more, it's more efficient and I find it personally more interesting and less boring so yeah I think what I'm aiming to do is a total of four supersets so that's eight different exercises and repeat each superset for five sets so I think that's going to be the best way of approaching it so no matter whether I'm doing an upper body day or a lower body day as I said four supersets and each repeated for five set so yeah that's going to be pretty much it i think it's going to be obviously still challenging and still aiming for around 45 minutes to an hour workout so if you have short of time you, i don't think you have to repeat it for five sets i think you can do four super sets repeat it for three or four sets and that's going to be more than enough so yeah it depends on what time you have available and what you feel comfortable doing and then in terms of heat sessions and all of that i think i'm going to do circuits which I love and if you've seen my stairs workout uh, where I did I showed you six exercises I think I'm literally going to do that um, so six exercises back to back that's one round of a, of a circuit rest and then repeat for as long as you have time or as long as you have energy um, the only thing is that the stairs workout which I did is literally the one prior to this video is only focused on leg day and because as I said hit session of full body days is going to be the whole body so i'm going to probably combine it with things like push-ups and like throwing punches or anything that as i said gets my heart rate up and i can do super quickly and i don't necessarily need any equipment or you know any weights or anything so yeah that's probably something i'm going to do for heat session but i am definitely going to you know film everything and show you every single thing so you can repeat it with me and do it that way another thing that is super important regarding my goal at least which is getting stronger and better is obviously progressive overload so besides me doing workouts and targeting upper lower body x amount of time i think it's very very important to write down exactly what you're doing write down exactly if you're using any weights or any resistance bands or how many you're doing doesn't matter just write down every single thing you've done for that workout so that the next week you can do that but better so you can either do more reps for each set or you can use more weights if you're using dumbbells. There are so many techniques to make a workout more intense that don't necessarily involve having more weights or a gym or anything like that. So as soon as you make sure that you make it more challenging and difficult, you can even you know shorten the rest times in between sets or you can um, make sure that your form is on point which requires more concentration requires your muscle to be engaged more effectively so yeah there are so many things that we can do uh, to make a workout more intense week per week and do progressive overload so again that's something that i will probably talk in each video workout video and i will exactly say how you can make it more intense and how you can you know progress and ensure that you're burning more and you are generally getting better uh, so it's something that i think is going to be more a matter of case by case and exercise per exercise and just talk about that um but yeah so that's more or less the plan the other thing i have to do today is get rid of as you can tell all the christmas decorations and everything that's christmas because i mean it's the 8th of january so i don't have any excuses anymore um so i will probably do that now especially because they did say that it's bad luck if you don't take them out quite early uh, which does explain quite a few things because the past years i think the max we reached was march with the decorations out i mean I know it's embarrassing and don't even get me started on that one but it has been times where we literally did not have the time with the energy the, like the mental capacity of taking down the Christmas decorations so yeah it has happened years that we will have them out until March and do that now and just do it once and for all but yeah so that was 
everything I want to talk to you about today, especially because, as I said, I just wanted to update you with what I'm doing and just let you know that if you do the three principles I'm talking about and you do not want to track macros, you can do it. And it's just a matter of trial and error. If you know that a day has been particularly good and you do feel better and you know that it's in line with your goals, then my personal advice is to basically eat that for the days to come. Not necessarily exactly the same things, but if you just substitute the type of veg or you add different type of spices, you can add some piri piri spices, basco if you like hot things, or you can just trial and error different types of herbs. But overall, if the quantity in grams of protein and veg are the same, then it's going to be much easier to stick on a diet without having to track every day and things like that. And similarly, if you are tracking macros, then the same thing. You can track one day or two, and then you just see more or less what you're eating, how much or what, and then it's just a matter of substituting with different types of veg that have more or less the same, you know, macros in it, which basically all greens have. Um, and even between like potatoes and sweet potatoes or bread and rice and whatnot, um, I think once you do it once or twice and you try to wait a um, certain amount of calories for every carb source, then it will be quite easy for you to judge just visually if you are on track or not so yeah that's basically what i'm going to do i'm going to track for the first i want to say two three days and then keep going for a week and see how i feel write down how i feel and really make sure whether or not it's work it works for me and i just need to see and just make sure that i am happy with it and it doesn't make me feel like I don't know, I'm moody or hungry or whatnot. So yeah, it's just a matter of trial and error what works for you. And yeah, and also just wanted to say that it's better for you if you want to calculate your macros to calculate it with your personal details and your personal lean mass and height and activity levels and whatnot. Because if you just do what I'm doing, like my macros, it 100% won't work for you. So I really, really suggest you calculate your own if that's what you want to do. And again, if you have any doubts, if you don't know or you're not quite sure if you calculate it right, just comment down below. I will do my best to help you and give you advice. Uh, but everything should be taken with the pain like like a grain of salt i think that's to say so yeah not everything i say is 100 percent right just because it works for me doesn't mean they will work for you so yeah please do your research look more sources if you feel like that's not quite right then don't do it absolutely that there is no reason why you should trust anyone but yourself but if you want to give it a try then of course i'm here to help you and you know just be here, do some support if you need it. Um, but yeah, so that's what I'm going to do for the coming week. But yeah, so I really hope you like this video. The next one is going to be, first of all, I want to do a gym wear haul because uh, I got a few pieces online and I thought that there is nothing better to motivate yourself to get a new new pair of gym wear to wear, a new set. So yeah, I'm going to do a gym wear haul next, which will probably be up. Sunday I want to say so yeah the day after tomorrow then I have a few abs challenges workouts like that and just make sure that I can show you exactly what I'm doing so that you can if you want follow me along or at least get an idea of how I'm structuring my workout so that you can create your own accordingly and yeah as I said a million times I really hope you like it if you did then please don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to my youtube channel and hopefully I will see you next time ciao